What's up, everybody? We, we got a new video. All right, I got. Yeah, we got to go, well, get. All right, here's what. Here's what I learned. We got to get quickly to what we're doing. The five whiskeys you shouldn't buy. This one's a good one. We prepared it. We prepared for this one and we're excited about it because we actually think we might could save them some money. Yeah, we don't typically like to go negative. We don't like to call out specific people. We're gonna have to get a little bit of that this week, but we really picked five categories of whiskey that we think that you can stay away from and you're probably much better served with your dollars. The first one that we're gonna talk about is celebrity whiskey. Right. Now, you see a lot of these, they're very popular right now. Yeah, you got the Kunis. And you got the McConaughey. Well, Mila Kunis is just a, a spokesman for Jim Beam. So I don't know that that's... Oh, she doesn't have... Yeah, that's about. right. She doesn't have her own whiskey. You then can go even to like uh, uh, Terry Bradshaw has his own whiskey. Or you right. have like Drake has Virginia bourbon. Like there's Peyton all Manning, these different... Sweetens Cove. Right. An so investor There's a, There's obviously going to be uh, some that don't... It's not a general rule, but I feel like... For the most part, if you stay away from a celebrity brand, yeah. then you're going to be doing a better job with spending your money. Next, we have odd flavored whiskey. Yeah, odd yeah. flavored whiskey. We, have we, we got had a, we any got a of good, those? We got a good one. Ew, we have never had one of those. Give me that. This is mine. I invested money in this. Ever heard of whiskey flavored with the anal glands of a beaver? We we have. We've got the whiskey for you. Uda Musk. Castorium whiskey. Castorium means is the is the long form. Oh, you said musk. Of and anal I just, glands. I had to get close and smell your musk. Right. But this okay, but this Uda Musk is anal glands. Of a of a beaver, specifically. It's it is something that's used in flavoring agents. Uh it's they've used it in ice vanilla. cream in the past. I don't think they use it anymore because it's kind of expansive. Yeah. It's supposed to, it's supposed it's supposed to be it's supposed to be this like creamy flavor or whatever. It's like, oh man, it's supposed to have a really great mouthfeel. Let me go ahead and tell you about something about that mouthfeel. It's it's kind of crappy. Hey, anal glands. Oh, I'm gonna do it right now, just just to say that I did, and I I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure this is not gonna be good. We we do uh, talk about the beaver butt often. There's also like a lot of the peanut butter whiskey. There's a lot of other flavors that we just aren't a big fan of flavored whiskey in general, even if it is like straight bourbon with added flavor. Just stay away from it. I don't think it's even a good gateway into bourbon. I don't think it's a good way for you to really find what you're looking for because it's just flavors masking the whiskey. And I would stay away from it. Give me your glass. I you don't want it. It's this developed. Taste. It's developed. This the anal glands get so much better over time. No, 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 no. I am picking up on a whole lot more wildlife gamey flavor <laughs> right, just to, on this thing. I swear on my life. Just a touch. It's just a scotch. Oh. Hit it. I feel like it's down it. I feel like down it's it. degraded. Down it. You know how a, you know what that tastes like? A beaver. Like 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 a furred beaver. Like a I never want to see this again. I do, I do. Oh gosh! It's a three hundred dollar bottle. No, it's a seventy five dollar bottle for two hundred milliliters. They don't sell it in full size. <clears throat> they sell me full size. Next we have. <laughs> Next, we have blended whiskey that is whiskey blended with grain neutral spirits. Mm -hmm. Now, Grease is a very classic example of this. This is one from back in the 60s or 70s when this was a popular thing mm -hmm. where people wanted a lighter flavor. So they just they blended in grain neutral spirits, which is essentially vodka. Look, I'm a sucker for a good decanter. OK, this plopped up on my radar and I was like, that looks old. Holy cow. This looks like crystal and like all this thing. I'm like. Oh my gosh, this looks pretty awesome. So this is essentially, this is 35% straight whiskeys, four years or more old, 65% grain neutral spirits. So while it's a pretty I bottle- I didn't look at that when I bought all right. it. So while it's a pretty bottle, Grease essentially bought expensive vodka. Mm -hmm. And this, while it comes in a beautiful bottle, these still are on the shelf. A lot of times these are bottom shelf pours, but you'll see it and look for the words blended bourbon or blended whiskey. Mm -hmm. Now there are some blends, a blend of straight whiskeys, things that 
aren't necessarily bad and are kind of trying to take back that name, but be very careful and look for yeah. the words grain neutral spirits yeah. because you want to stay away from it. You're essentially buying vodka, whiskey cut with vodka, mm -hmm. and it's a waste of your money. It's not going to be good. It'll give you a bad hangover. It's not what you want if you're getting into whiskey. Read the label read, is what we're saying. So read in, the label. The word blended is not typically a good thing. So right. stay away from it with American whiskey. Our next on the list is a premium 80 proof whiskey. Right. Now, a lot of people, when they're first getting into whiskey, they want something that's um, lower proofed, but they still want to like spend money on it. They want to feel like it's a premium whiskey. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of these out there. People a lot of that them, are getting gifts for people one, will gravitate them. One rhymes them. with Schmeisel Maidens. Oh yeah, Schmeisel Maidens. Schmeisel Maidens. We're not going to call it yeah. too many specific brands, but typically um, have it with Shepherd's yeah. Pie. Yeah, you know something like that. Of you know, you, we, why are you having Shepherd's Pie? Because it was you, you kind of had like an Irish. It sounded no. like an Irish thing. Schmeisel Maidens doesn't sound Irish. Is that German? No. What is it then? I just mixed up the letters. <laughs> well, don't we all? <laughs> Got him. <laughs> to walk away. Got him. Uh, Basil Hayden specifically is one that a lot of people gravitate towards when they're first getting into it. You're paying a premium for a lot of water. It's very similar right. to the grain neutral spirits where you're paying the money for right. essentially vodka mixed in. This is... You're paying for the electric conductor band. Yeah, there is copper on this. It's right. a beautiful label. A so lot of times- hand it over to each other, like, like if you grab the bottle, like I'm <laughs> handing it to you as a gift, we just literally shared a little bit of spatial maintenance. Of spatial maintenance. Uh, the, what you're really paying for a lot of times is the packaging, the marketing of something that they're making a lot more money off of because uh, they're putting more water in the product than whiskey. So be wary of that. Well, there are there are there are there are exceptions to all these. Like right. for instance, like people for instance, with good packaging, they're going to cost more. Will for instance, where's that? Uh, where, where do we put it? Sometimes you get something like uh, the Wild Turkey Masters Keep 17. This was pricey and it was only 86.8 proof, but this was cast strength. So there's always exceptions. This has no water cutting it. It was just the natural process that had it at a lower proof. But if it's something that's like 80 on the dot, and it's a premium product, for the most part, you're looking at something that you're gonna be overpaying for and should probably avoid. Will, we have one more left. Oh my gosh, we're almost through this. This is so fun. Go ahead, Will. All right, so a lot of whiskeys that we see now, there are things called non-distiller producers, NDPs. They are buying barrels or whiskey from someone else and they're putting a label on it. There's nothing wrong with that. That's been around as long as whiskey. But what we like to see is transparency. We want to see people saying, why they pulled this. Sometimes it's a non-distiller producer that is blending the barrels they get to make their own batch or something. Yeah. There's there's merit to that, we like that. But if it's something that's just buying barrels, putting it in a bottle and paying for packaging, we're not a fan of that. And for well, the same money, well. a lot of times you can get a lot less money, you can get better or similar whiskey when you're not paying for this zero transparency whiskey. Grease is a sucker though, I'm, and he pays a lot of money. I'm kind for of a, a fan lot of, of it. things. Right. And one, one being that I can't get over. Just put it right there. Is this monstrosity? Let me go ahead and tell you something, guys. This originally came with a crystal topper. Like I can't. I, I don't even. I don't even want to find it. Yeah. I, I don't even want to find it. it. It came with. It came with another topper that was like this. This is the old. I call this Gonzo whiskey. Right. There are there are actually a lot whis of whiskeys that have less transparency than this, but it says it's distilled in Indiana. <laughs> yeah, but, but it, it came in a box like your master's keep, bro. Look at that. Look, see, this is what it came with, and then this was the extra little. Here's thing. the problem. We, it, it tastes young. We've tried it, but look, they have a nice. Can little I get through this? You can't. But look, they did a nice. They did a nice. They did a nice Ow. write up on it. So this has things like American craftsmanship. American Pride, small batch, but it's uh, it says distilled in Indiana and then re-imported by Aco Importers in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. So did wait, they, so, wait, did so, they send so. it out of the country and then brought it back and bottled it? Oh yeah, and let me go ahead and tell you something. I will gonna go ahead and say this. I've never tasted MGP like this. First of all, you should read this label 
because no one should be marketing this bottle ever. The most famous Derringer used for this purpose was fired by John Wilkes Booth in the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this Is this one of those Facebook shirts ads? Like, did we get Facebook shirt added? No, no, not we. You. Right. <laughs> I bought two of them, by the way. John's a whiskey. Knows. Also, two. If you find a bottle and it looks a little shady, just kind of do some digging as far as just like, I don't know, like just peeling off whatever this metal thing is slash it's a daggum sticker. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. That's that's it. And you can find these bottles, by the way. These bottles are not new. They just like they're, oh, they're over a hundred bucks. Grease paid way too much for it, and there's not a lot of transparency. We know the state it was distilled in, which is right. required by law. It was extra it was, aged in Alibaba or whatever <laughs> dot com or whatever. All that to say is that when there's not a lot of transparency, stay away from the bottle because you don't know what's in it, and you can probably find something that has more transparency for cheaper and not overpay just on packaging and marketing because that's a lot of what's out there. All right, folks, those are the five whiskeys you should avoid. Yeah, five whiskeys you should stay away from. They're categories. Five types. We give you the tools to be your own boss in whiskey buying. We hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to the channel. Give us a thumbs up. Support us at patreon.com slash the podcast. And that's going to do it for this informative 12 minutes or less.